first on Fox, a chance at the championship is on the line as the Badgers take on Kentucky. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Leah Linshide in for Danica Lewis, who is covering the Badger game tonight in Indy. And so far, it's been a close matchup with the Wisconsin Badgers tied with the Kentucky Wildcats 36 to 36 at halftime. Of course, whoever wins that game will go on to battle the Duke on Monday. They defeated Michigan State earlier this afternoon. We'll have the very latest on the game from Eric Ryla a little later in sports. Well, fans here at home have been packing bars since the early afternoon on State Street and Fox 47's Felina Jones was down on State Street earlier. A lot of excitement out there. A lot of excitement and they were ready to go early this afternoon, Leah. Fans were making lines hours before the Badgers game even started. Bars were already close to capacity and lines formed outside of State Street Brats before 5 o'clock this afternoon. Despite students being on spring break during this year's Final Four, most fans are not spending the weekend away from Madison and did not want to miss out on watching tonight's game. Last year we had more students because it wasn't spring break, but it's an older crowd um, and it's, it's like the 25 to 30 somethings that, that are just trying to enjoy the Badger game. But for the fans who can't forget how close the Badgers were to victory, losing to the Wildcats by just one point last year's Final Four, they say tonight is a time to settle the score. Because it's Bucky and they want it this year. Revenge factor. So a lot of excited fans tonight here in Madison ready to make 2015 our year to win it all. So Hopefully it's our year. Exactly. Hopefully it's our year. Crossing fingers, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks, Melina. Well, Badger fans aren't just partying in downtown Madison tonight. Hundreds also made their way to Indianapolis to cheer on the team. Of course, nothing quite beats getting pumped up with the Badger band behind you. Bucky and the gang joined a sea of red to get people excited ahead of today's game. Barry Alvarez also took the stage saying he likes the Badgers' chances tonight. They're only undefeated. It's a very big challenge, but that's, that's why you're here. You've got to beat the best. It's neat to see these people and how happy they are and how they support our basketball team. It's, we really appreciate that. UW Chancellor Rebecca Blank also talked to the Badgers in Indy today, saying she's got all the faith in the world for Bo and the boys. Well, among all of the wagers on today's game is a friendly one between Governor Scott Walker and Kentucky's governor. Now, if the Badgers lose, Governor Walker owes an assortment of Wisconsin cheese, of course, and sausage, along with some root beer. But if Wisconsin wins, Walker gets, get this, some Kentucky bourbon. Well, you can continue to follow Fox 47 News at 9 as our crews in Indy cover tonight's big game. Check out Twitter and Facebook pages for the latest. Turning now to Bob Lesh out on the Fox weather deck with your first Fox cast. Not a bad weekend for April in Wisconsin, Bob. Not at all, and uh, it's actually a very pleasant evening. The winds have died down from their peaks when they were gusting around 30 miles an hour earlier today. So, uh, you know, if you can take the big screen outside and watch the Badgers out there, hey, that's a, that's a good idea. It's very nice out. We are seeing a, a few more clouds starting to move in now. As you can see, this uh, stationary front developing, and there are some showers just out to our west, and we are expecting to see some of those tonight. We may even see some of them mixed with a little bit of snow well to the north, possibly clipping our northern counties. Madison's currently at 47, but with no wind, that's not a bad temperature at all for the evening hours. 50 in Monroe, we're at 50 also in Mineral Point and Lone Rock. Everybody else down below 50 at this point. As we head to tomorrow morning, our best chance of showers will be early in the day, and then we'll see our temperatures rising back into the mid and upper 50s across the area. We may see some showers late as well, but again, most of those will be north of our area. That's your first Foxcast. Thanks so much, Bob. Strong storms that moved across the plains in Ohio Valley this week are being blamed for at least one woman's death. Heavy rains flooded parts of Alabama and Tennessee with strong winds downing power lines and trees there and even flipping over a truck at one point. More than 3,000 Nashville residents spent last night without power, but electricity has been restored this morning. So far in Missouri, the National Weather Service has confirmed four tornadoes there. Crews are still trying to determine how many tornadoes touched down in Kansas as well, with reports there ranging from 5 to 12. With the final four games underway in Indianapolis, community leaders and athletes are stepping up their call to get rid of the state's Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Derek Gordon, the first men's basketball player in the NCAA to come out as gay, says watching the sports community stand by the LGBT community has filled him with pride. Sport does not discriminate. Athletes and athletics at large are about exclusion, respect, and fairness. Watching the sports community this week stand by the LGBT community, especially the NCAA, 
and stand up for exclusion filled me with that same pride. Meanwhile, in Arkansas, lawmakers on Thursday passed a revised version of their Religious Restoration Act that was immediately signed into law. Presidential candidate Ted Cruz is releasing his first ever TV ad over the Easter holiday. Over and over again, when we faced impossible odds, the American people rose to the challenge. The commercial is running during programs about Christianity. He's the first declared 2016 hopeful to hit the airwaves. Cruz is hoping to revive the evangelical voter turnout that was last seen in the 2004 election. Family and friends of the victims in a deadly university raid are still searching for their loving, their missing loved ones. Kenya's president denounced Thursday's attack and declared that the government will do everything possible to support the victims and their families. Andy Rose has the latest. The full force of the law will be brought to bear with even greater intensity than has been the case in previous years. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has condemned the deadly assault on Garissa University College, declaring three days of mourning and ordering flags to be flown at half-staff. <laughs> Somalia-based terror group Al-Shabaab has not only claimed responsibility for the attack, which left 147 people dead and more than 100 injured, but they've also issued a statement threatening to stage another bloodbath in Kenya. Five suspects have been arrested. Saturday, a 19-year-old student was rescued from her room 48 hours after the assault. She said she hid beneath clothes in a cupboard while gunmen rounded up her roommates. And then these people ended in, in our room. And then they told my, my other roommates who, who had hidden themselves in the underbed. They told them to come out, to go out. She drank and, body lotion to survive and, because she didn't have access to water. Another student said she survived by smearing blood on her face and playing dead. Friends and relatives have been streaming into Garissa awaiting news about their loved ones. The education ministry has closed the university indefinitely. Despite adversity, we have been and will always be unbowed, and we shall continue to build a strong, prosperous, and secure nation. That is the greatest testament we can offer to those precious departed that we have lost. I'm Andy Rose reporting. Meanwhile, a last minute deal with the United States and Iran is getting mixed reaction across the globe. The Iranians insist they'll abide by the plan, which would keep the country from building atomic weapons for at least 15 years. Now, the preliminary deal sparked celebrations across that country, but details on lifting sanctions against Iran have not quite been hammered out yet. In contrast, Israeli's prime minister says the deal does not secure his own country's protection. Such a deal does not block Iran's path to the bomb. Such a deal paves Iran's path to the bomb. Netanyahu's dislike of the deal is echoed by House Republicans, which could make ironing out the agreement's final details even harder. Well, if you've visited the Mall of America recently, you'll want to listen up. Some chocolates sold at the Lint store there have been recalled. The store says some bags of chocolate-covered raisins and almonds contain hazelnuts, but it's not listed in the ingredients section. You, you can find out more information on that recall on our Facebook page. Just search for Fox 47 or check out the FDA's website as listed on your screen. Still to come on Fox, why one Kentucky fan says he's happy no matter who wins tonight's game. And it's all thanks to a generous Badger fan. And getting man's best friend into the spirit of Wisconsin hockey, we'll explain next. You're watching Fox 47 News at 9. Before we go tonight, kids around Madison are getting into the Easter spirit this weekend. Families celebrated a little early decorating hats instead of eggs for the annual Easter hat parade. Glitter, cotton balls, and tissue paper all used in those creations. The kids then sported the hats as they paraded around the state capitol this morning. I think it's fun to come downtown, um, get to enjoy the spring weather, which we're so happy we have, and um, just come together as a community and do some fun things with kids for spring. This was the 14th year for the annual Easter hat parade. My grandma loves Easter hats. Don't really? You, don't you yeah. have a hat? I thought you wore one of those into work today, didn't you? Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, I did. Definitely. Yeah, with the <laughs> that happened. All right. Not a bad day to be parading around with a hat, though. <laughs> yeah, you had to hold on to it. It was so windy <laughs> today. It was not going to be quite as windy tomorrow, and temperatures will be similar. We'll be in the mid to perhaps upper 50s. However, we've got a front that's going to just kind of sit over the area over the next week. It's going to generate a lot of showers and possibly some thunderstorms, mainly from Monday night into Tuesday, and then again on Thursday and Friday. Those will be two separate rain systems that will move through just a day apart. Wednesday, we do get to take a break. We'll be in the upper 50s there with partly sunny skies. So that looks like the best day of the week. 
But on the whole, temperatures aren't too bad. We just have a lot of rain coming. And again, that's not too bad either because we are in need of some of rain. You know, a rainy day on Monday, not a bad day to watch some Badgers. Hopefully. Oh, oh, by yeah. eight last Hopefully, update. That's and, what and you can get opening day and then the Badgers. All right. Sounds like a day to me. Calling in sick. We're calling like in. It. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.